Hey, it's simple, you're watching Torrent Channel. Shut the fuck up, you fucking bitch. Glaiv, the in-game leader of Astralis, finds himself in a position that in the past was often occupied in his team by Zipnix, in that, just like Zipnix, whenever he has an amazing game that's above and beyond what you'd call expected performance from a player in his role or in terms of the balance of where the stars are in the team so for example you expect Glaive to be a mastermind and call the tactics but you don't expect him to have 130 ADR or take over a whole map in a final. Zipnix you expect him to play well, to anchor sites, to play very intelligently, to play a very shored up sort of very cerebral but safe and defined game to allow other people to take risks and to push elsewhere and for him to then use that information so when he then wins loads of clutches and looks like he has big stats in a game you want to say he was the reason they won the game so what happens is these two players are very good examples but it applies to anyone who's not a traditional star they're not a Nico, simple twists elige device go through the list oscar sonny instead we're talking about like a chris j we're talking about a glaive we're talking about an NBK or uh, someone along these lines who doesn't play a traditional star role and people saying, this guy should be the MVP. This guy was the difference maker. Because it's actually very tricky and I have an issue with it, which is why I'm making this video. Because I think generally that these people shouldn't actually win MVP awards. Like, first of all, in, in term, because I mean, just as a general principle to state at the outset, I think of the MVP award, the name of the title is Most Valuable Player, as being an individual award. It's not about team success. It's not about cause your team won, you definitely had the most valuable player. It's not about cause your team won and whoever played the best in the game that won you the match means that he was the most valuable player, no. So giving MVP awards, first of all, to in-game leaders is always gonna be very, very tricky because personally, since it's an individual award and it's about how valuable you were as a player, which implies in the game, I actually don't think you should give people it based on intangibles like, oh, he's a great leader or he's a great teammate or he was calling great tactics because obviously that's incredibly difficult to actually know what they were doing in that sense. You're kind of speculating in a way that you don't have to when you just look at what the person actually did as a player. So I actually have had this issue. And in fact, there's going to be a couple of examples I'm going to give throughout this, in, this video of an in-game leader and a support player that I myself have given MVP awards to that I look back now now, and I kind of regret and think actually I shouldn't have given them the award just as I now look back and I think I shouldn't actually have given Kirby the award for MVP at the first major Astralis one E-League Atlanta just actually should have been device for the whole tournament but now we're going to obviously I hadn't figured out my principles on that one and that's where I'm going to lay out now so where I had this issue myself a rare example of me giving the in-game leader an MVP award would be when Titan after the first French shuffle, when they got Maniac and Kaylee and Apex into their team, won DreamHack Stockholm Invitational 2, which was the one where, if you remember, the final was an all French affair. It was the first event for LDLC's new lineup with NBK and Smiths and uh, Kiyoshima, Apex, uh, not Apex, Happy and Shocks, if you remember that lineup. LDLC lost that final to Titan. Kenny S went super ham, he dropped massive numbers, but I gave Existence the MVP for exactly the reason I'm now gonna argue against, which is I thought he called an amazing game. I thought LDLC actually had a more talented lineup on paper. I thought even in terms of players who were in form, they got some of the better players actually at that point in time. Their team balance looked better. Sure, they didn't have a classical in-game leader like Existence, they were trying to use shocks at that point in time. Uh, oh no, actually I think MBK maybe did that event and then Shox took over afterwards for the SWC qualifier. And so since actually Titan won with some amazing T-sides and they won on maps traditionally you wouldn't have expected them to, something like Mirage for example, I actually thought, wow, Existence has done such a great job here. Even though Kenny has carried the game, Existence is the difference maker, right? He's the reason they won. He's the one who put them over the top. Kenny S could have had that performance and they could have lost the title. So the big problem there is I didn't give Existence the MVP for his individual play in the series. I gave him it for what I thought he contributed to the whole Titan squad, but in a sense I can't can't actually know that I can't really do it like for all I know he maybe even miscalled some rounds and Kenny has just fragged his way out of it or Apex did an amazing job in that particular sense it's kind of tough to know right so giving someone the title for in-game leading I don't think works unless 
You're giving the, the title to an in-game leader who actually is still winning the award just for what he did individually. So great ex exceptions here are people who traditionally shouldn't really be in-game leaders. They're actually star players who out of happenstance or their own choice just became an in-game leader for a while. So Nico and Mouse Sports is a good example. When you give him the MVP award, you're not giving it for any in-game leader aspect. In fact, you shouldn't even add that in as a detail in terms of why he won the MVP. Just his individual performance alone in Mouse was enough for an MVP. Likewise, Shock's the same year, 20 2016. In fact, 2016 had a whole bunch of the players who legit could do it. Shocks in G2, obviously, where they almost won EPL. They did win ECS with him fragging out of control. Stewie 2K, when he first joined Cloud9, they were making top fours, even the odd final of big international tournaments. He was mainly the star player and the in game leader. The same year, you could add in Fallen, who admittedly he was doing a bit more in game leading, but it was mainly his individual performance that would put him in the category with MVPs. Ironically, he rarely ever did win MVPs because he had Cold Zero on his team. So Cold Zero won the MVP, and which is one of the things I'm going to get to now, which is essentially, I think, correct that Cold Zero wins all the MVPs. So as I say, you can't really say it's just because they're in-game leading because those are intangibles. We can't really know what they do. That applies to players like Shocks, like Stewie 2K. Like, you shouldn't add in that they're an in-game leader as a reason why they win the MVP award because the MVP is about being a player. Now... There is an exception to that, which is Fallen, but even with Fallen, I think people went too far. The fact that he was a very good individual player and was close to MVPs just individually at times, I think is why it's bullshit that, for example, he was put by HLTV as the second best player of 2016. Like the idea that Fallen as an individual player was better than Shocks or Nico, this is an outrageous concept, even simple maybe. Like, no, he wasn't. Like, if you're adding in that he was an in-game leader and his team won a lot of tournaments, yeah, those are other factors. I personally don't consider those factors. So really what we have to get down to is this term MVP, most valuable player, and say, how do we define valuable? Because personally, when you say most valuable player, I consider that to mean, it's, I don't even think this is playing semantic games, most important player for your team. And that's over the whole tournament because it's not the MVP of the final. It's not the MVP of the match that won you the game. It's the MVP of the whole tournament. So who was the most important player in this whole tournament? Now, this is where my issue comes with how people break this down because the general thinking seems to be who played, unless you're talking about someone just has stats that are so crazy that the stats suggest they were just by far and away the best player, unless that happens, and if they're on the winning team and they have those stats, they're almost certainly going to win the award. But in any other cases, what seems to happen, and obviously particularly when you have someone who has amazing stats for the whole tournament and is the best player on his team, but maybe had a bad final. So obviously Device has occasionally done that in a Strauss or just had an okay final, and that's why people want to give it to someone else. Then the general thinking seems to become whoever played above expectations. So, for example, I referenced Taco earlier. I gave him the MVP for ESL, EPL, season... Let me think, what would it be? I think it would be season five, right? The one that... No, season six. The one that was at the end of um, 2017 when they won over FaZe Clan in the final. So, if Taco, in that match and that tournament generally, plays way better than we expect out of him or a support player generally then he gets the MVP because you say, right, he was so much better than another support player or the other support player or that you'd expect him to be that that made him so valuable that he was the most valuable player. The problem is, the reason why I look back now and question that and actually think I shouldn't have given him the award, what I should have done is just given him a tweet or made an article or a video saying, wow, what a great job, you performed so much above, you are very valuable, but he wasn't the most valuable player. Let's be real, the most valuable player for SK Gaming was Cold Zera. If Cold Zera doesn't have a six series in the final, that doesn't mean the rest of what he did in the tournament isn't valuable anymore because there would be no final without Cold Zero. There would be no SK without Cold Zero, quite frankly. They wouldn't even be a team that could win tournaments and hence you couldn't win the title. So quite frankly, I consider this the player who has contributed the most to the victory over the entire tournament. And that is nearly always going to be the best player or the star player. And if not, it's probably going to be one of the other best players or star players, which often means more skilled players in terms of their impact on the particular game. Like, this is not a popularity contest or lifetime achievement award or something where voter fatigue should be a thing. If Device is the best player for Astralis, the most important player for Astralis, in seven straight tournaments and they win those tournaments, he almost certainly should be the MVP of those seven tournaments, unless someone who was a star player of another team was even better. It doesn't matter that, oh, because he's won five of them, you know, I want to show that I uh, appreciate uh, Zipnix as well, and I want to show that Glaive really played over a bump of his performance over here, because think about logic. Say they hadn't won those tournaments in the past. 
What, so you're now going to steal what would be Device's only MVPs on these last two tournaments? Because since you now know he's won a load of those tournaments, you want to give one to Glaive, one to Zipmix, to show that they're a very balanced team. No, it's not about... Yeah, they are an incredibly balanced team. Maybe the most balanced team ever. And you'd have to go back to, like, CS 1.6 and the MTW teams of Zonic. But that's irrelevant to who was the MVP and who was the most valuable player, even if it's only by a smidgen. And in the case of Device, it's not by a lot. Compared to the other superstar MVP-level players in the world, particularly Nico and Simple, they are much further ahead of their teams in terms of how valuable they are than Device's over at Astralis. But it doesn't change the fact Device is the most valuable player in Astralis and therefore, in most cases, deserves to win the MVP award. Glaive is a very sick player even actually, if you take away as an individual and in-game leader, just the role he plays within the game, I'm pretty impressed, actually. I think he's pretty good there. He's a pretty solid player. But without Device playing the way he does, they wouldn't win the title. They likely wouldn't win any titles. And as a result, Glaive wouldn't have an opportunity to even win an MVP award. Not least because people who count the intangible of his in-game leading, well, because they lost the game, a lot of people then, because it was so subjective and it would have to speculate on what an in-game leader does, they would say, oh, well, actually, he wasn't the most valuable player because his team didn't win, therefore he didn't in-game lead correctly. You see how it's actually illogical to then say, oh, well, hey, see, the fact that one means the in-game led, led correctly, like that doesn't always follow, and you have to apply the same principle, just as I did with which events Astralis won. You can't just say, well, because he won some of those ones, he's already won his awards. No, no, you have to treat each tournament in isolation when you're judging it. Likewise, if you're going to give someone the credit for winning the game and say, oh, you did great in-game leading, then when they lose, logically, you'd have to say, we didn't do a good enough job. So even if Glaive had the same stats and his team had lost an incredibly narrow 3-2 final, by the logic of people who want to give him extra credit for being an in-game leader, he gets less credit, even though, by the way, in that scenario, it's incredibly hard in the moment to speculate on an in-game leader anyway. You need to review the demos. You might even need to talk to them and talk to the opponent to see if they were doing anything clever. They might be doing some basic shit. Then again, that's part of being an in-game leader. So that's one of my problems. Likewise with Zipnix, when he wins all those clutches, why is he in a 1v2? Why is he in a 1v1? Because anyone's going to say he wins all the 1v4s. He doesn't. You know how low the stats are on even the greatest players of all time winning 1v4s and 1v3s. Because you shouldn't win. You're in such a mad man disadvantage. It's incredibly hard to do it. But yes, he wins a lot of 1v1s. Yes, he wins an, an, a disproportionate amount of 1v2s and 1v3s. But he wouldn't be in the position to win those without a device, without a Dupree, without someone fragging everyone's heads off. If he was constantly in 1v5s, he'd win very few of them. He wouldn't be able to win you the game. Him. He wouldn't be what you see as the difference maker. He couldn't put you over the top. The reason why it's called put you over the top is you're already close to the top and this guy adds a bit and puts you over. Now, yes, it's very valuable to win clutches. But if you can't get kills in the round to get you the guy into a clutch scenario, it's irrelevant. It won't help you in that scenario. The difference is people like Device, Simple, Nico, they can just win you the whole round on any round, seemingly. It's not about they have to be in a clutch scenario. It's not about, oh, they're in a 1v1, but they're unlikely to win this one. No, no, they just kill everyone generally. They kill more people than the other players on their team. They win more rounds for you overall on their team. They win more matches for you. They get you deeper in tournaments. And therefore, they're the MVPs of your team. So... Star players, think about this way. Star players, generally, because they're the best players in your team and have the most impact, they're the ones who get you through group stages into playoffs, where you're even starting to get a chance to win MVP. They get you from a quarterfinal that you could have played amazingly, won 10 clutches in but lose, into a semifinal by being the big fragger, by getting the most rounds. They get you from a semi into a final... But then we then say to them, if we're the people who say that like all these intangibles, it's about just how well you played compared to the expectations, then in that scenario... We're saying to them, oh, by the way, you know you got us through the group stage into playoffs? Yeah, well done on that. But uh, you know you got us through the quarters into the semis? Yeah, okay, well done. You know you won that big semi-final that we could have lost and gone out third to fourth? That's great, but you now must dominate the final. It can't even be that you're the best player in the final. You must be so far above and beyond, otherwise I'm just going to give it to this other guy because you've won a lot of awards. And also, I think this guy's a really good player, which is irrelevant. Really good player and MVP are two very different things. So it's kind of bullshit, right? It's kind of a bullshit logic to use. I mean, think about it this way. In a world in which, so to go back to the Taco Cold Zero example, imagine a game, I know in that particular game, Taco did very well, but imagine a series in which, so we'll use a sports example here. Imagine in football that Messi scores three goals, but a defender scores a goal that's really important and wins the game 4-3 for Barcelona. Does that mean the defender was the MVP of that game? Because we don't expect him to score goals. He scored the winning goal, and if it wasn't for his goal, you wouldn't have won. 
No, because logically, as I gave with the device example and the cold zero example, that guy wouldn't win the game with his exact same goal without the three goals of Messi. Who did more of the heavy lifting? Messi with the three goals. Like, I know it's not a perfect example because sometimes the person who scores a goal did all the hard work, but you see the point I'm making in this particular scenario. And likewise, there would be no tackle going off in a final if cold zero hadn't got him into that final and done things in that final to put him in position to win potentially. So you don't have to give MVPs on stats alone. Okay, I'm with you on that one. I've never been someone who thought stats were the be-all and end-all. But don't do it just for the storyline or because you think a player is underrated. Think logically. If you think a player is underrated, and it's not that he's criminally underrated, like he's easily the best player in this team and no one even gives him credit, like it has happened in the past. No, it's that, like I would say personally, that happened this year to Oscar in mouse sports. People went out of their way to find a reason that it was Rops or Sonny or Christian or anyone was the best player in mouse and the real reason they won. Except Oscar, the guy who put up the best numbers over the year, consistently was the big carry in the big games they won, the big files. No, we had to go out of our way to give it to other people. So in this scenario, think about logically. If they're underrated, then rate them appropriately, which is they're a good player or they're better than we expect. Don't say they're the best player, which is what you're saying basically if they win the MVP, they were the most valuable player. Now you've gone too far and you've overrated them, which is a classic move people do. Because when you overrate, you overrate them, you not only give them a trophy they don't deserve, there's no trophy for be a better player than the, uh, we appreciate or an underrated player. If there was, give them it. You're giving them the most valuable player. Now you're overrating them. And even worse, when you overrate someone, you steal an MVP from someone else who's more deserving, who was the most valuable. You take it from that guy and ruin his storyline and his tournament just to give it to someone else and make them feel good. Let me just make this principle clear at the end. It's a general rule I apply to all sports and esports and team games in general. You can disagree with it. It's just my observation and built on the principles that I've learned through the game. If your role can't carry the game and be the most important, you know what? That sucks for you. But the reason why I can't feel too bad for you is because the fact that your role doesn't do the heaviest lifting, carry the whole game, and isn't the most important is probably why you're now winning trophies. Because you've got someone who can do all that for you, which allows you to win the trophies. So I always say this, right? I always say there are differences between individual and team awards. Team awards are winning the trophy, winning the medal, winning first place, getting the acclaim of being a champion. Individual awards is whether you win or not, you were amazing in that game. You're the star player. You're the best player. You were the best player in the tournament sometimes, like simple as this year, even when you didn't win the tournament. So in that scenario, the individual award, an MVP award, is to celebrate that individual. The guy who isn't in a role that can carry and isn't the most important, his reward is the team award. He plays his role in the team, lets the other guy carry, gets carried by him, and gets to win a trophy. That's why Taco can say, I'm a champion. Whereas Simple's won way less championships than Taco. What, so then Taco should get the MVPs as well? Zipnix and Glaive should get the MVPs as well over Simple. How's that fair? Now they get the team award and the individual award, even though by definition they don't play the individual role that they can win from. Now that sucks for them. In football, it's rare that defenders and goalies win the MVP. In the NFL, they're almost never going to give the MVP to a fucking defensive back, no matter how good he is. They're going to give it to the best quarterback, aren't they? Or maybe to the best running back who has some insane number of yards in a season. So I know it's a tricky topic, and I'm not claiming that I that only my opinion is correct, or I'm the only one who's cracked the code. I've laid out my framework and how I model it, but I don't think you should give these people MVPs unless... As individual players, they genuinely do outshine the stars in their teams. So if Glaive really did post better stats, play better in all the big games, uh, dominate the key rounds, do the heavy lifting, then yes, give him the MVP. Or just as I said in the past, you could give it individually to Shocks and to Vol who were in game leaders. But don't give him it just because you think he's underrated, because he's never won an MVP award, because Device has won too many MVP awards, because Astralis has won a lot of tournaments and Device has got a lot of the MVPs. These are not good reasons to. These are bullshit quite frankly, media narratives, which is why the sports world has become bullshit for MVPs and why they consider things like voter fatigue a legit reason to steal someone's MVP award. This video was kindly supported by Dean Tanglis, Andreas Snazor Westerland, Gardner Wilson, Ollie J, Tobias Bernasconi, Nate D-O-double-G, James Harding, Kyla Harris, Travis Greb, Daniel Yordanov, and as always, a special thanks goes out to Jerky's Minion, would you like to suggest a topic or a guest for some of my upcoming content? Perhaps you want to ask me a question in my monthly AMA. Do you want to see some teasers? See who's going to be the next guest on one of my shows? Maybe you want to take part in an esports discussion with me. Well, 
Put your money where your mouth is and join the Skrilluminati today at the Patreon link in the description box below.